I'm in a Windows 2022 server, as you see in the lower right-hand corner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a VPN server. So I'm going to click on Add Roles and Features. Click Next. Click Next. Next again. And now I want to choose Remote Access. If it asks you to add in any features, just go ahead and do that as well. Click Next. 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 Now here's your options for the type of VPN. So I'm going to choose the Direct Access and VPN. Click Add Features, and now I can click Next. And I'm just going to choose the default ones that you see here. What it's going to do is it's going to automatically add Internet Information Services. So that's basically just the web service. And it's going to add the features that it needs with it. And now I'll click Install. There's several different types of VPN that Windows Server 2022 supports, such as SSTP, L2TP, and others. If I go into Device Manager and choose to view hidden devices, as you see here, we can see all the different types of adapters that show the different types of VPN it supports. So we see SSTP, PPTP, L2TP, Ike V2, GRE is part of PPTP actually, but it can also be a tunnel by itself. So I'll go ahead and close that. By default, a PPTP or a point-to-point -point tunneling protocol is going to be enabled once you set up this VPN server. You don't have to do anything else other than just allow access to the individual users. SSTP is going to need a certificate since it's uh, sort of like the SSL technology you would use to go out to a shopping website. You need to add in a certificate, so I'll show you that area. L2TP and Ike V2 are going to need to either use a certificate or a shared secret. And the shared secret is much easier to set up, but of course the certificate is more secure. You can add the certificate in a couple different ways. One is you can go into Internet Information Services, which it installs by default, and you can do a request for a certificate to either a public authority or a root certificate authority, or you can create your own root certificate or certification authority on the server and then create your own certificate that way. The public way turns out to be uh, a little bit more expensive because you have to pay for it, uh, but in the long run it's much easier because the clients that try to connect to it are looking for that public certificate. So you'd have to do a whole bunch more things in order to get it to trust a self-signed or a private certificate from your uh, Active Directory domain. So if I click on Tools and I go into Routing and Remote Access, we'll get to see the new manager that shows up. Now I can right-click and choose to configure Enable Routing and Remote Access because by default it's going to be turned off, so you've got to do this. But there's several different types of routing and remote access that comes in here. And most people are going to be setting up with using a single network connection that's internal, or if you may have multiple network cards, but they're all internal behind a firewall such as a Cisco ASA or, or a SonicWall, that kind of thing. So because of that, you want to choose Custom Configuration. If you choose any one of these other options, then it just won't work right because a lot of these options are designed for having a public IP and network card on the outside uh, facing the internet and we're not most people aren't doing that so now I'm going to choose the VPN access click next and finish and now it's going to prompt to start I'll go ahead and start and as soon as this is started, it's going to enable the firewall ports inbound for all the different VPN types that it supports. So you should not have to go in and make any changes, but it's not a bad idea if you get into any errors. So now I'm going to right click and choose properties. And we see all the different types of properties. If I go to security, then here's where we can set up L2TP and Ike V2. So if I click on allow custom, uh, IPsec or uh, for L2TP or IKV2, you'll go ahead and type in the pre-shared key that you'd want for that. That's one of the first steps for L2TP. There's a lot of other steps. I have another video on this for the entire setup for L2TP you can check out, but by default um, the point-to-point -point tunneling protocol is ready to go if you want to use it. Now the other option you can choose is SSTP or SSL certificate binding and you hit the certificate, choose the drop-down and I don't see a certificate here so we need to either create a certificate or we need to do a certificate request. I'm going to go up to IPv4 
and by default it's going to look to the DHCP server to assign an IP address to your clients. Now if you don't have a DHCP server you'll want to click on static address pool and you'll want to add in a group of IP addresses that are not being used out on your network. Now make sure that you keep an extra IP address for the server itself. So if you want 10 VPN connections for instance then make sure you set up 11 here because one is going to be used for the server itself. Here are your options for Ike v2. And one of the advantages to Ike v2 is that if you get disconnected, it will automatically reconnect without having to re-authenticate. So it's great for really slow connections that may disconnect often. So right now, this is ready to go for point-to-point -point tunneling protocol. Change that back to DHCP. Click OK. I'm going to go in and create a certificate using IIS for the SSTP. Now, one of the reasons why you'd want to use SSTP above all others is it's the one that for sure won't get blocked at hotels and, and uh, restaurants, things like that, where you may want a VPN in. Almost all the other ones are going to be blocked in most places. So if I click on Server Certificates in the root, then here I can create a certificate request. And this would be for, say, a, a public certification authority or a root one on your domain controller. But just for these, these testing purposes, I'm going to click on Create a Self-Signed Certificate. So I'll click on that, specify the name. I'm just going to call it VPN dot, and then whatever your Active Directory domain name is. And this one is my domain dot internal and leave it at personal and click OK. So now there's my certificate that's all set up. Now I'm going to go back into routing and remote access and when I go back into the properties I should see that certificate there. And there it is. So now I have enabled SSTP in order to use the SSL type of VPN. On your firewall, you'll need to enable port forwarding for the point-to-point -point tunneling protocol uh, uh, ports such as GRE and TCP 1723 or the SSTP port, which is just port 443, and forward it on to this server. You're also going to want to set up a DNS host record. Now, if this is, again, public, you're going to want to set up a host record, say, at Network Solutions or GoDaddy, and point the public IP address to the one that's on your firewall port forwarding into your server. But since this is all internal for testing purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and add in an A record, call it VPN, and point it to itself. So this IP address is .244. Click Add Host. So now when we get the resolution for VPN.MyDomain.Internal, it should work for us on the Windows 10 computer. Another thing we need to do is to allow the user to be able to VPN in. There's a couple of different ways to do that. One way is going to be to go into Active Directory Users and Computers, and I'm just going to use the administrator as an example. So I'll double click on Administrator and choose Dial In. So I can either choose to allow access, deny it of course, which is not what I want, or allow it through the NPS network policy. I'm going to choose allow access just for a single user, but I do want to show you that NPS policy because if you want to do a whole bunch of users, it's a lot easier to do it that way. So network policy server. And then you want to expand policies, network policies. And then you want to make sure that these are going to be enabled. So I'm going to go to Properties, and I'm going to choose Grant Access Policy Enabled. And there's my other one, Properties. I'm going to choose to Grant Access and Policy is Enabled. So now if you leave it at the default to control through network policy, this will work. Let's go to the Windows 10 computer. I'm on the Windows 10 computer, and I'm going to go to Network and Sharing Settings by right-clicking on the Network icon and choose Open Network and Internet Settings. And you can either use the traditional Network and Sharing Center, or you can choose the new VPN option. Either one should work fine. I'm going to choose the newer one just because it's possible they're going to turn off the old one at some point. And I'll click on Add a VPN Connection. And the VPN provider, just leave it Windows built in, the connection name. Now, if you're going to use the SSTP connection, you're going to want to put in the name of the certificate. Otherwise, it won't work right. So vpn.mydomain.internal. 
And then the server name and address could be the same thing again, or you could put in the address. I'm just going to right click and copy since I created that host record. I don't need to use the internal address. Now we want to choose the VPN type. So you could leave it at automatic, but if you know you're going to be using point to point or L2TP or one of these other ones, then I would choose that because it'll, it won't scroll through all the different ones. It'll just go directly to it. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to choose PPTP and I'll put in the username. Now, if you're using point to point tunneling protocol, you don't use the domain name. You just put in the username and the password. If you're doing SSTP or any other type of VPN, you will put the domain name backslash username. So I'll click Save, and then there's my option. Now before I connect, I just wanted to make sure that I'm getting resolution. So I did a ping uh, vpn.mydomain.internal. But if for some reason you, you're not pointing your DNS to the internal DNS, you're not going to get resolution. So what you got to do is you got to go into Windows, System32, Drivers, etc. Go to your Hosts file, and then in your Hosts file you're going to want to add in the pointer that will go to this particular server. So in my case, I put in the IP address and then I put in the name vpn.mydomain. So now I can get resolution. But if you're using the, the DNS server internally, then you won't have to worry about that. So let's click on vpn.mydomain.internal and click connect and make sure we can connect. I'll click on the connect button and look at that, connected right away. So if I go to my command prompt and I type ipconfig slash all, I'll now see more than one IP address. So I see my original IP address, but I also see my VPN, which is the PPP adapter that you see here, IP address as well. You now have the knowledge to set up a Windows VPN server and client. To set up an L2TP or Ike v2, it will take significantly more steps. Check out my L2TP video to set up this type of VPN connection.